everybody! Are things working? Things are working! My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody just calls me Ciotti. And today, we shall do many things. Spent the day on the lake yesterday, Lake Lanier. Uh, who, who recognizes that house? Anybody recognize that house? Uh, first person to recognize the house wins. Nothing. In the chat, we've got... Kaylin Sprecher, Chipset FPV, Dan Richmond, Dave's FPV, Eric Allen, Jail Captain, John Dees, John Dyson, uh, Just Because, Love Drummer is in the house, Mark Lauper, uh, ooh, that's a tough one, Marcelino, that's not that tough, Romero, how are you, uh, Mike Bergman, Mr. Huggy, Mr. Sprinkles, Mr. Shady, uh, Marabro Marabrodet, Off Axis FPV, I think he was the first one in here, Oro the RC Overlord, <laughs> J. P uh, P Patrick Scott is here, Parklander, Pilot Mini FPV, Proton to go, Stevo 43068, Weirdo with Skateboard, Tiago Ramos, Turtle B, and Zero FPV. If I missed you, you just gotta comment sooner. How's everybody doing? Hey! I don't know why I just said A. Um, probably from, because I'm from the Italy. Uh, how's you, how you guys doing? What's up? What's up, fucking collective? How's everybody? been a couple days. Uh, Turtle BFPV says, hello, hello. Uh, John Dyson says, good to have you streaming. Bit of a tough week here. Hope you're well. Hope you're well too, John. Hope, hope things are better, man. I um, unfortunately know exactly what you're talking about. Love Drummer says, how's it going? How's it going to you? Uh, off Axis deleted one of Mr. Shady's message. <laughs> Leave that. Don't delete that. Mr. Shady said, see, I told Joshua that Ciotti's never ready. I was ready. I was ready, Shady. How dare you? How dare you? Um, oh, off axis, don't, 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 don't you dare. Don't time Shady out. Shady is, is fine. Unless somebody gets, like, full on out of hand, um, you moderators can just kind of, like, let it go. Until somebody just starts attacking me. And then let it go anyway, because I want to attack them back. Uh, Birdwatcher says, Patrick, uh, Oro the RC Overlord, oh, he's already got the best name in the chat. Um, now he's got the best question in the chat so far. Do you think that there are any worthy upgrades for the iFlight Nazgul 5 6S? That's a really good question, Overlord. Uh, if I only knew that quad. Let's take a look. Uh, iFlight Nazgul 5 6S 5 inch. All right, what do we got? What do we have here uh specs okay so it looks like it's on an f4 processor uh 1700 kv it's a really good kv um zing e 2207s good motor uh the propellers i've heard that those nazgul 5140 propellers are good uh but not the best so, uh, start screwing around with different propellers. Uh, my personal favorites are uh, the T-Motor 5143s, and some of the other real good ones are the Gemfan 5143s. If you need more power than that, uh, there are a bunch of 5146 options out there for you. And then if you want to go as lightweight as possible, the uh, HQ Steel Props are um, a really good choice. The Watermelons, which are a 3.1 pitch, uh, the S4s, which are a 3.6 pitch, or the S5s, which are a 4.1 pitch. Uh, so, yeah, I would definitely uh, start playing around with some different propellers. Uh, oh, here we go. So the receiver is an XM Plus. So it looks like the receiver is either an XM Plus or an RXSR. Um, so a possible upgrade would be going to Crossfire. Uh that can be a little bit of an expensive upgrade because you have to buy a module. Um, I personally run the micro module, which is not very expensive, uh, and it works beautifully. So, yeah, maybe that. Um, that'd be a good upgrade path for it. Uh, Cadex Retel camera. I would maybe go over to a Runcam or Foxier camera. I'm a big fan of Runcam. Um, so, yeah, there might be an upgrade there. Cadex cameras just have a terrible tendency to just kind of, like, fail at random. Um, and if that happens when you're up in the air, then you're going to be looking to upgrade the whole damn thing because you're going to lose it in the woods forever. Maybe. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? 
All right, so let me look at a picture of the frame in a second here. Yeah, so I mean, it looks like the electronics are pretty damn good. Uh, oh, what VTX? Uh, so it just says, it doesn't really tell me what the VTX is here. So maybe switching over to like a legit VTX, like a Tramp, like a, an Immersion RC Tramp or a, um, uh, or a TBS uh, uh, 5 volt, uh, Unify 5 volt, that might be a good choice. Uh, let's see here. It looks like the carbon is running the length of the arms. That's a good thing. Good job, iFlight. Ooh. So they took a lot of material out of the arms here. I don't love that. Um, I have a hunch that down the road, you m once you start crashing it hard, you might have an issue with the arms breaking here. Uh, there's not much meat there. Uh, so if that happens, I would, I would move it to a different frame. Um, that... Sometimes frame design just, sometimes when, when frame designers do stuff like this, they just don't get it right. Um, but maybe, it, it, there's so many, so many different things going on in frame design that technically speaking, maybe it's plenty strong and it just looks weak in that area. Um, so I would wait, I would wait until you um, start breaking a bunch of arms. Um, if, if you start breaking arms, that might be a good uh, point to, to upgrade to a different frame. Why can I not? Oh, okay, so they've got this VTX sitting up on top here. Uh, yeah, I would definitely swap the VTX out. Um, I would get that VTX out of there and put one. It looks like there's plenty of space back here behind the stack for an Immersion Tramp or a Unify 5 volt. Um, so that, I, I would definitely do that. I do not trust, um, I don't trust like rando uh, VTXs in general. Uh, so yeah, there you go. There's a really good upgrade path for you. It looks like you've got a, a lot of really good parts on there though. So um, as long as that frame doesn't fall to pieces when you start crashing hard, um, I would kind of leave it alone and, and just fly the shit out of it and um, save your pennies and maybe buy a second one. Um, having two, having two identical rigs or even three identical rigs is really really nice. Um, there's no adjustment period. Uh, switching between them, you bring two or three rigs with you when you go out to fly. If one of them breaks, you don't spend an hour fixing it. You throw it in the back of the car, grab the other one, throw a battery on it, and you're back up in the air. Um, you can swap parts between them to make sure that, like, if they both, if you manage to break both of them, you can just pull parts out of one, drop it in the other one. Uh, so yeah, man, I would uh, do a couple of those small things there, maybe, and then just fly the hell out of it. Just, just fly it as much as you possibly can, get lots of batteries and just get lots of stick time. Uh, good question, brother. Thank you for that. Let me get this full screen dropped out here so I can look back at the chat. Hey, there we go. Um, all right, so let's see if anybody figured out what the house was so that you guys can win nothing. Uh, bop, 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 come on. Somebody's got to get it. Somebody's got to get it. Yes, Atlanta, Kalen. Bold move flying from the boat, BH says. Yeah, I mean, if your stuff hasn't fallen out of the sky recently, it's pretty safe to fly out of a boat. Um, on the, uh, on the five inch rig though, with the, uh, the GoPro, we did a little, uh, pool noodling. Huge shout out to, uh, Patrick and Sanaka. I basically just showed up and they had like everything all good to go. They even had the pool noodles all chopped down. Um, so all I had to do was um, zip tie it. Uh, I don't actually know if this much pool noodle will float uh, 610-ish grams. Um, I was very tempted at the end of the day to just throw it in the water to find out. Uh, but that's just a ridiculous thing to do. Uh, what I would like to do at some point here is find something around the apartment that's waterproof that's roughly 600 grams and zip tie it to this and uh, throw it in the bathtub. But I mean, in theory, it looks like it would float, right? Um, it, it, I think I was down on speed a little bit, go figure. It's, it's hauling a big <laughs> round bastard, but it, it didn't affect the, the flight characteristics as much as I thought. Uh, there was a little bit of prop wash, but I do, I did put these I shouldn't have done this, but I put these gigantic Gemfan 51, um, 52 props on thinking that we were just going to do all long range stuff and um, they were not jiving with these Emacs Eco 2306s. Um, just nowhere near enough motor for such a heavy prop. This is like a, 
this is like a five plus gram prop. These are these are ridiculously heavy, but supposedly, according to the long range hooligans guys, um, these are the prop for five inch long range and high speed stuff. Uh, and they did okay. They they did pretty good. The the footage I was showing you at the beginning, believe it or not, was the tiny trainer. Um, I've got. Uh, I'm going to show you some footage from this in a second here. Um, but yeah, this was a <laughs> this was an absolute blast. Um, if you're, if you're anywhere near a lake, get your ass out on the lake. I, like I said, I think that this would float it and yeah, you just go and you fly over water and it's awesome. So do it, man. These quads are unbelievably, um, unbelievably like dynamic and, and, and they can just do so many things. Um, and I think it's easy to, to kind of forget that. Mike Bergman says, George Bush's house? Nope, not George Bush's house. Um, wow, are there no Netflix fans, fans in the house? Where can I get that t-shirt, Parklander says. Um, this is a blip shift shirt, I believe. Yeah, this is a blip shift shirt. Eh, eh. Uh, the only problem with blip shift is B L I P S H I F T. The only problem with blip shift is um, they put a shirt out and you've got like 24 or 48 hours to buy it, and then it's gone, um, and it can potentially go away forever. Uh, sometimes they will bring shirts back that are really popular. I have seen them bring this shirt back, I believe once. Um, but yeah, uh, blip B L I P. Uh, type it in the chat. www.blipshift dot com uh yeah get on their mailing list friend them places because you got to see them every day you got to see the shirt that they put up every day or else you'll miss it so there you go uh zach barnes is up in here what's up to you so nobody's figuring out the house all right so nobody wins nothing i get it Zach Barnes says, huge thanks to Ciotti for the YouTube doing the thing. Huge thanks to uh, helping motor options the other night. Ended up with 1202 10,000 on a 2-inch 2S, 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 2S freestyle build. Uh, I can't wait to see how that is, Zach. I think that's going to be awesome. Uh, Stuck in Trees says, what's up? What's up to you? Dave's FPV says, as long as it looks like it's going to float, that's all that matters. Exactly. Um, it will float, but it'll flip over. Yeah, I was... I was trying, when I got there, I was like, Patrick, Patrick showed me his, I was like, why don't you put the thing on top so that, so that it, and then when I went to put it on there, I was like, oh, because it's a pain in the ass to put a pool noodle on the top, um, so yeah, that's fine, <laughs> it's fine if it flips over, it's already in the water, um, Rob Axis is asking if anyone's been active on the RDQ forum, oh, oh yeah, that's right, they put a forum on their website, um what do we got what do we got what do we got what do we got hey ray hova got it ray hova you win nothing congratulations um good sh good show ray hova i'm i'm i gotta say i'm i'm disappointed with the rest of you disappointed disappointed i thought you guys were were more on the Watch what I watch on Netflix, Train. I've been trying to give you guys recommendations. Get your asses over to Netflix and watch Ozark, and then you'll recognize that house. Uh, it's one of the best shows of the last ten years. What do you think about that? Um, all right. It looks like a bunch of people are looking for 1404 Emacs Motor Talk. Um, so let's jump on that. But first, I'll sell some car insurance. Um Ciotti FPV can be found here on YouTube, on Patreon, on Instagram, and on, I don't know why I'm pointing down, uh, on Facebook, I'll point up this time, uh, on Patreon, that's why I was pointing down, there's a link down here, uh, if you head over to the Patreon, it's three bucks to get in the door, lots of really good stuff over there, um, uh, technical articles, PID tuning, uh, tutorials, advice, filter tuning stuff, uh, early releases, early edits, uh, 
when we get to 200 patrons, there's going to be a full build that gets given away, um, and that's all for that's all on the the, the entry level tier. Um, then there's a five, ten, twenty, and thirty. There there are five, ten, twenty, thirty dollar tiers. Those get you in on the Monday night giveaways. So tomorrow night there's going to be four giveaways. Three of those giveaways are for patrons. Uh, one of those giveaways is for super chats for people that for whatever reason can't uh, join Patreon. Uh, so yeah, if you do five bucks a month, you're going to be entered into the weekly Monday night Tiny Whoop and Toothpick giveaways. Ten bucks a month puts you on the three inch micro brushless giveaways. Twenty bucks a month gets you into the five inch rig giveaways, and thirty bucks a month gets you in all of the above. You get put into all three giveaways. So you're entered into twelve giveaways a month. Hopefully that's worth the thirty bucks. Typically it is because those folks usually win almost once a month, once every other month. Um, and then the stuff that I give away is usually like 30 to $60 worth, sometimes 100 bucks worth. You never know. Uh, so there you go. Uh, John Dyson says, need to watch out for low passes over water with the pool noodles. <laughs> yeah, when, when flying over the water, um, something that you really, especially if it's still, um, if there's waves in the water, it, it's a lot easier to, um, what the fuck's on my hand? It's a lot easier to... Um, tell the surface and, and tell your elevation but if you're flying on on any kind of water that's remotely smooth understand that you cannot th through the fpv goggles maybe through dji um, but through analog you cannot tell your elevation so be really careful like being a foot versus an inch off the ground looks exactly the same through the analog um, when when the water is somewhat smooth the trick is to have a um, to have like the bank of the water or at least like boats off on in your peripheral vision basically and you have to judge your altitude by that so you're literally looking left and right to, to judge your altitude when when water is remotely flat um, on this particular day the water was rough enough where I could I, I had a good idea of the um, um, of my elevation and my rule of thumb is just to stay a little bit high uh, uh, on top when you're on the water um, waves kind of come out of nowhere it, it's just it's really rough and and it also when you're really low to the water it doesn't look as impressive as when you're really low to the ground um, on like cement or pavement or whatever uh, so yeah a couple tips for you for for flying over the water that are actually really important um, okay more car insurance sales. So yeah, Patreon. Join the Patreon. Um, that is where Patreon takes the, the least amount of a percentage. And it's just a really cool community over there. So I would rather you guys um, join the Patreon than, than do Super Chats, if I'm completely honest. YouTube takes 30 plus percent out of the Super Chats. Um, Patreon takes like 7%, I believe it is, out of the, the, uh, out of the Patreon stuff. So... Yeah, and like I said, it's just an awesome community of people over there, and I've dumped a lot of good knowledge. Um, I, that From the beginning, I've just wanted a spot to dump all the knowledge and have a cool little community of people, and thanks to you guys um, just nudging me into doing the Patreon, now, I've, now we've got that. So that's why I push the Patreon so hard. I hope that's cool. If it's not cool, then eat dirt. Don't actually eat dirt. You're cool. <laughs> um, sponsors, Tweet FPV, who's giving away a set of uh, transmitter grip tape tomorrow night, as he does every Monday night. Um, who else? Uh, these, I mean, sponsors slash friends of the channel. FPV Geek makes just a switch. It's a switch for your um, for your goggles that works really well and it's really cheap, and you should go get it. Uh, Ronda Leos is the mastermind behind that. FPV Space Geek. Uh, BMC 3D makes the best TPU. Go get you some. Uh, Emacs makes awesome stuff, and they're one of the newer uh, relationships that I've been able to build. And yeah, so lots of cool stuff coming from them. We'll talk about their 1404s in a second. Uh, get FPV is doing some awesome stuff as well. Uh, they kind of uh, got me rolled up with um, FPV Crate who sponsored the Tiny Trainer build, which is pretty awesome. So FPV Crate as well. Uh, Stan FPV makes awesome ducts to turn your regular rig into a Cinewoop. And FPV Cycle is my favorite of the toothpick websites. FPV Crate I need to add to my little list here. 
MC 3D. Okay, let's make this a little bit wider so I can squeeze them in. Hey, look at that. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's all. That's all the insurance will sell. Let's talk about the tiny trainer and these motors. It's all taken apart because that's what I have to do in order to get the goddamn memory card out. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is admittedly annoying um there's a pretty good chance that i'm actually going to take the hd out of the tiny trainer um oh hold on hold on hold on i got something for you guys if speaking of cidf pv on instagram if you're not on my instagram you're missing out so go over there and get on there and i'll show you why i only put this up over there so you're missing out this is from yesterday to give you guys so you, you saw a little bit of Tiny Trainer beforehand. Um, this is what I was uh, doing with the five-inch rig. Here you go. Come on now. <laughs> Yesterday was a good day, my friends. Um, so we actually ran into those. Uh, huge shout out to Patrick and Sanaka um, for bugging me to come out. I was I, I I slept until I slept very late yesterday and was I don't know. Um, ever since the corn streams uh, stopped, I've been in a weird place. Um, but yeah, huge shout out to those guys um, for getting me the fuck out and and for um, yeah, just amazing day. Uh, that is one battery. I think I flew about eight or nine. Um, a lot of the footage is kind of junk because I stupidly put the five inch rig onto those propellers um, without taking a battery to retune uh, to, to retune for such a, a heavy and pitchy prop. So a lot of the footage is um, wiggly, unfortunately, but uh, got some good stuff. That boat full of people uh, we just randomly met and uh, yeah, what, there was actually a uh, photographer on the boat who's who does some uh, pretty slick photography drone work, and uh, yeah, we're gonna be working together in the future, so that's gonna be super fun. Uh, those guys in the boat said that they also do motorcycle stuff, uh, dirt bike stuff. Uh, so yeah, ah, that's gonna be fantastic. Uh, I, I've been dying to shoot. Uh, I've been dying to fly under a dirt bike while it's. While it's jumping, so hopefully these guys, I mean that kid was gnarly on the wakeboard, so hopefully they're as um, uh, fearless, let's just say, on dirt bikes. So, could be some cool stuff coming soon. Uh, join my Instagram to see that a little bit better quality, because this stream murders it, and it was also very small. Uh, but yeah, that was a, a super duper quick, just little like trailer that I did last night um, on the laptop, uh, just farting around on the couch. I'll do a full edit. There's a whole extra battery after that of um, them going back and forth. So I can I can roughly double that. I have to chop that down a bunch, but I'll probably do like a quick little two and a half minute, maybe three minute edit with that. Um, Rob Axelson, anyone asking, anyone been successful with adding a servo in beta flight? Uh, I want to be able to fly off of a dock and drop a fishing line lure, uh, fishing lure way out. That's interesting. Um, I think plenty of people. I, I think doing servos in beta flight is pretty well established. Um, a lot of the Cinewoop guys are doing it uh, for the um, uh, for the GoPro mount on the front of the Cinewoop, so that they can put it at like zero angle, and then they can fly backwards and tilt it forward, uh, and then they can fly forwards and, and tilt it back. So I'm pretty sure um, servos have have 
yeah, there, there's a way to do it in, in beta flight. I would maybe check with the Cinewoop folks. Uh, full CT is in the house. What's up, Seth? How are you? Gel Captain is pumped to hear me talk about the 1404 Emacs motors. I think I already read that comment. John Dyson uh, talked about that one. Ted Blake, are there vitamins I can take to fly better, Ted? No, you just got to do it a lot, man. It's 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 even better than fly, than than taking vitamins, though, right? Because um, flying is fun, and to get better at it, you have to do it a lot. So you have to have a lot more fun. Um, the problem, of course, is finding that time. Uh, for me, the secret was squeezing in a half an hour of sim time every single night on Velocidrone and Liftoff. Um, I tried to not go to bed for months and months and months straight without having simmed for at least a half an hour. Um, I'm, I'm, I was always willing to sacrifice a half an hour of sleep um, to, to kind of do that, and that made a huge difference. And then just having a lot of batteries and, and just forcing myself every single day to, to fly as, as much as I could. Um, Kristen was, was very, very understanding during that period um, because there were a lot of nights where it was just FPV everything all night long. Um, so hopefully your guys' significant others are as understanding, but I doubt it because she's pretty unique and special and wonderful. But uh, yeah, man, one of those kind of, one of those cool hobbies where you got to force yourself to have a whole bunch of fun to get better. That's what I keep telling myself, at least. Um, Zach Barnes, what do you think of the true RC OCP antennas? Um, thinking of ordering a 90 degree for the goggles. Let me take a quick look. True RC OCP. I think I know which one that is. I think that's the clear and black one. And I actually talked to true RC about that antenna. And um, they told me that basically it's the the it, it's the same as the yep this is the one um, so it's the same like thought process behind the singularity but just made a little bit cheaper um, so made not quite as good um, because you get what you pay for right so uh, I love the 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 singularities. They work unbelievably well. I mean, you know, I was out on the lake with regular old 5.8 forever away. Um, also, for the record, for anybody that says FR Sky 2.8 doesn't have good range, you're not doing things right. Um, I was, I was far enough out where it took me like 20, 30 seconds to get back on certain runs, um, and that's with a big pitchy prop, probably cruising at like. I don't know, 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. Um, so yeah, good antenna placement and an FR Sky system that's not broken, right? No chopped antennas, no jacked up transmitter. Um, make sure your transmitter antenna is vertical. Make sure you're standing in a place where the, where you know your transmitter is down here, right? Make sure there's not a f fucking concrete wall that's this tall. That's that all the transmitter uh, mojo is is bouncing off of, right? Um, yeah, you can do a lot with FR Sky. Uh, in, in fairness, I was very... Well, so you guys got to see a tiny trainer failsafe uh, on the beginning of the stream. Basically what happened there... So the, the only problem with mounting your um, FR Sky diversity antennas down like this is if you go perfectly tail in because you point both nulls almost directly at yourself. Um, I prefer to, to put them on the front arms, which makes that situation a little bit better. But when they're on the front arms, you can have problems with when you're flying. Um, well, see, it doesn't happen as much because you don't flatten out when you're flying home. Usually when you're flying home and directly towards yourself, right, you've got the nose down. So when they're on the front arms, you're actually fine. But if you were to flatten out, when you're flying towards yourself, that would be a problem. But you don't really do that all that often, right? Usually, like, you come back and then you circle yourself a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I think I found the fatal flaw of putting these guys on the back arms. Unfortunately, I, I don't have quite enough uh, cable on this setup to get them to the front arms, which is fine. The, 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 it's, it's ridiculous to fly this as a... <laughs> as like a long range rig like I was doing it. I was mainly just doing it um, to get this thing up in the air and, and to get some cool. I, it, what I was kind of doing was getting HD footage with it so that I can make an HD edit with, with an HD tiny trainer and get that, you know, juicy clickbait. 
and then I can take the HD board out of it because it just it, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense as, as an HD rig. It, it makes much more sense as a um, as just a regular rig. Um, all right, so I think we're caught up enough. So yeah, that's the OCP antenna. It's probably fantastic. Um, the, the, when I talked to them, they said it still works beautifully. It's just not manufactured to the same um, super strict uh, you know guidelines as the Singularity. So um, yeah, I would. Uh, True RC makes amazing stuff. So I think that OCP antenna is going to be great. Um, okay, so let's talk about these 1404s because I think I'm almost caught up on the chat. Uh, they're phenomenal. Uh, so, previous to these Emax 1404s, I had uh, my 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 pretties, <laughs> my super secret motor for the last um, three or so years, uh, which is the uh, RCX 1304 5000 kV. Uh, these 1304s have been around for a long time. They are a fantastic motor but they just don't have the power for three inch props. Um, and if you're gonna run them on 3S, they also don't have the KV, in my opinion, for this kind of a rig. So I moved from these motors, which are gonna find their home on a two and a half inch rig. The, these motors on 4S 450s on a two and a half inch prop, in my opinion, is as good as it gets. Um, the the Emacs uh, not blur um, the Emacs Rush two and a half inch prop with these motors on a good two and a half inch frame game over that's the two and a half inch rig um, it's just so good um, and these motors are eight bucks per on myrcmart.com um, so you also and they're tough as hell they're, I bashed the shit out of these motors. And like so, I, when I last time I did a MyRC Mart order, um, they're overseas, so the shipping is expensive, or it takes forever. Your pick, twenty five dollars for overnight shipping, ten dollars for take forever shipping. Um, last time I did an order, I got eight of these things because I thought, okay, I'm gonna bash the shit out of them, and I want to be able to replace them. Um, I haven't broken one. Um, admittedly, I haven't been flying them a lot. Uh, I was flying them a lot like two years ago, um, which is around the time that I did said order, uh, but. Yeah, they're super durable. They're they're shockingly durable. Uh, so for a two, but again, for a three inch prop, it's just not quite enough. Uh, not quite enough stator volume. Not quite enough KV. Uh, but these Emax 1404 6000s, on the other hand, are perfect. Um, they are a little bit more notchy for sure. I had to back my pid tune down. I think I was up in the 70s on the P gains, which is pretty goddamn good. Um, those RCXs are incredibly smooth, beautifully smooth motors. Um, these Emaxes are not quite as smooth, but they're also not, I wouldn't call them notchy. I, they're, they're kind of in between. Um, so I was able to just drop 10 points off of P, five points off of D, I believe it was. And um, that took care of, so I, I didn't change the PID tune and I took it off from the dock. And as soon as I got into the throttle, it started to oscillate. Um, so I had to do, I, I, it started to oscillate and take away, take off um, with that with the zero throttle. Um, so I had to do my little add a bunch of roll and like force it where I want it to go, which was towards the bank, um, towards the grass. Uh, and then it stopped oscillating weirdly, so I was able to flatten it out and then just really quickly land it. Um, drop the uh, drop the P's down 10, D gains down by 5, and then it was fine. Um, there were certain motions, like when I would mix yaw and roll, that I would hear it just starting to oscillate just, 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 just a little bit. Um, luckily, it didn't come out in the HD, um, so I do need to drop the tune down just a little bit more just to get that um, little bit of extra oscillation out, uh, and we'll be good. Um, and I was flying it on the Gemfan 3116 uh, tri-blades, and yeah, man, it ripped. I mean, you guys got to see it there in the trees. Um, I have, like, I have a bunch more foot here. Let me, let me roll the footage while I talk. I'll, I'll talk over the footage, because there is a bunch of it, um, and it'll give you guys a... A good idea of the power to kind of expect from it. Uh, let me mute this. Where's the mute? There's the mute. All right, yeah. So there you go. Um, 
but yeah, very, very, very impressed with these Emacs 1404 6000s. Um, this is pretty much the FPV crate build. Um, here's the other really funny thing. This thing is so quiet, you can like sneak up on people in boats. People, I, oh, Although, I will say that um, even with the 5-inch rig, people didn't really hear me coming in boats. Um, because boats are loud and there's a lot of wind and whatnot. But, I mean, look at this little thing. Like, look at this little thing just getting it done, man, out on the water. No, no pool noodles on this, man. Just, uh, just, just relying on, you know, clean building and, and luck. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, highly, highly, highly recommended if you're building a tiny trainer for freestyle work. Which doesn't really make much sense. Look at this. Look at him. No idea. No idea. Hi, guys. Hanging out. Hello. <laughs> just a little tiny trainer. Just just buzzing behind your boat. Somebody look back. Come on. Somebody look back. Hey, there we go. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> she blew a kiss. I couldn't see. I can't see anything through the goggles because the, uh, <laughs> the baby turtle FPV view is awful. That is hysterical. Oh, it's so funny. She blew a little kiss our way. Look at that. Look at us go, guys. Um, who says quads are bad? FAA, watch this. Come on. FAA, get to the channel and you tell me that this is a fucking... Well, I mean, this is sub-250, so I guess, technically speaking, the, the FAA is not mad about this. But, um, yeah. Uh, if, if you're... So, the, um, the, a big part of the idea behind the tiny trainer is that it's a trainer for the DR, DRL racer. Um, everybody that I've heard talk about how the DRL racer flies say that it's like a bowling ball with, <laughs> with, with quad motors on it. Um, very underpowered, very heavy. Uh, so it makes total sense that when Evan spec'd out the, the motors and, and all the stuff for this, that it would be built as a trainer, right? It's... It wasn't built to be a freestyle rig. It was built to be a trainer for the DRL rig. So the the 1404 um, uh, 4500 Zing motors and the uh, 4533 KV uh, Fly 533 motors that are going to be coming in the FPV crate box, um, they're you know I had a 5000 KV motor on it and and I I was not happy with where it was for freestyle. Uh, so to go even lower KV than that, just understand that, you know, what you're building there is designed to be a trainer rig, right? It's designed to fly like that, that, uh, racer rather than fly good or fly, I, I shouldn't say good because it does fly good. It's just underpowered. That's all. Um, so if, if you want to build a freestyle rig with it, um, I think you're going to be better off with a 6,000 KV motor, which... Um, that kind of makes sense for, for me, 6,000 is the minimum KV for 3S, um, 5,000 is my preferred KV for 4S, uh, there's just a certain amount of power that I'm looking for with a build. Um, I'm really looking forward to also testing this out on a little bit of a more pitchy prop. Uh, these Gemfan 3016s are a, a very low pitch prop. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the 3-inch Emacs Avan props and the uh, Gemfan Wind Dancer 3028s on here. But I, I can't believe how well these 3016s flew. I really can't believe. I mean, look at this thing. Covering ground, like just doing it all, man. Flying over the lake. Awesome little rig. I'm, 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 really, I'm really happy with this rig. Um... Like I said, look. There's a lot of prop in view. It, the main reason that it doesn't make sense for an HD rig is because they've put the camera so low, and by putting the camera so low, the props are in view up high like that. Hey, Kristen, look at um, Patrick's dad's house. Uh, yeah, Patrick's dad's house is beautiful. That that's where we were. Um, Patrick's father's um, dock boat house. Everything. <laughs> there's Patrick pretending to moon. Yeah, look at this beautiful house. Ready? Can you see from there? Yeah. Jeez, it's right on the water. It's right on the water, yeah. Alright, here it is. Ready? Look at that! Oh boy. 
Yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, this this rig is pretty awesome. I'm I, I had such a blast flying this yesterday. Um, making sense for HD or not? Uh, yeah, I I can't. I can't wait to fly it some more. I can't wait to get these. Uh, oh, speaking of, I got to put these batteries in the charger. Um, here, let me give you guys. Uh, you'll also get to uh, to see what the microphone picks up. In fairness, the microphone is facing downwards, so the microphone is completely shielded from the. Oh, that's interesting. So because it's got a canopy, the microphone is is. T that was a little sketchy for for the record. Um, the the microphone is shielded from the um, from the wind. And the audio it picks up is not terrible. So let me give you guys a, uh, a battery here. I need to fire up the charger uh, because I want to go fly after the stream. So here you guys go. I'll give you the full audio. So that was it, trying to fly away. It was awesome. So here. So I took it off, right? Did you hear it? Oh, wait, no, you didn't hear it. Ready? Listen. Almost lost it. If it had hit the other way, it would have just bounced right in the water and sank like a stone. <laughs> Let me give you one of the uh, one of the Ozark batteries. And well, that's the one that I played at the beginning of the stream. Hold on. This should be the other. Oh no! Did I only fly one battery there? Huh. All right. Well, I'll give you the birdhouse battery one more time while I put the. Uh, Batteries on the charger. Here you guys go.
Oh my god, that timing. What beautiful timing. Uh, if you guys see fire or smoke coming over my, my shoulder here, let me know in the chat. I just plugged in like a hundred 6S batteries. A hundred, guys. A hundred. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, very, very impressed by these Emacs 1404 6000KV motors. Uh, they're cheap. They're not super notchy. And Emacs is an awesome company. So get them. Or else we're not friends anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I'm... Uh, yeah. Pretty awesome. Let's get caught up on chat. Uh, while I'm getting caught up on chat, look at this cool product. See if you guys can figure out what that is. Um, um, Off Axis does Patreon and Super Chats because he loves to support people with huge hair. But if you want to shock him, send him some money on PayPal. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Uh, Rab Axis and the noodles will work. Put two on under the motors. Uh, under the motors, front to back, like pontoons. Oh, well. Uh, so, Rob, have you flown it with like with with that? I I have to assume that that's gonna really have uh, quite the effect on flight characteristics. Um, what I really want to get is this little guy. Let's see if they still have it. Let's see if it's still in my wish list. Yes, it is. Ah, farts. Well, it's been out of it's been currently unavailable like this for a while. Um, it looks to be small enough that so it it um, oh my God, why? Okay, sorry guys. Uh, yeah, depth activated. so it uh, well, uh, the video is gonna show you. Ready? 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 Kind of terrifying that it goes under the water like that for a while. Um. Okay, so what it does is nothing, and then you lose your shit under the water. Oh, no, there it goes. Wait a second. Is that all it does? Oh, it's got a string on it. Okay. Uh, how long is that string? I thought it popped a, um, a little... I thought it had a little CO2 canister in it, and it, po it would pop a... Uh, but, I mean, the string thing works. What the hell? Yeah. Why not? Okay. Um... Yeah, so that, oh wait, wait, does it say? Uh, 100 feet, okay, so as long as you're flying in 100 feet or less deep water, uh, yeah. Uh, but it's small enough where I'm pretty sure that we could mount it maybe even to a micro, just dead center in the middle, and it wouldn't have any negative effects on um, on the, the flight characteristics. So, yeah, I just gotta find one of these. Look how small it is, right? Gotta get one. Okay. Um, what else do we got? What else do we got? Chatty chat, 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, I'm super far behind. So I'll give you guys this to look at again, and I'm gonna try to get caught up here. Here we go. Uh, where were we? There we go. Mark Kunoff says, woohoo! <laughs> Not sure what he said woohoo to, um, but I like it. Uh, Noah liked the arc. Just put some shrink tube around the antenna if you crash a lot. What antenna? Noah liked the arc. Explain. Put some shrink tube around the antenna if you crash a lot. Not sure what we were talking about. This is the problem with me getting so far behind in the chat. Uh, Ted Blake, watched your stream too many times now to not contribute. Just got on the Patreon. Nice. Thank you, Ted. Much appreciated, man. Welcome to the collective. Uh, Patrick says, FR Sky for the win. Goddamn right. Uh, Rob Axison says, Mountain Insta 360. Go on it. Rob Axison, I wish. Let's, let's see if my Insta 360 Go is in stock yet because I have to buy it from Best Buy. To get the um, to get the thing in the place to get the uh, no nonsense protection plan and no such luck still sold out um, so yeah 
once that comes back in stock, I will most certainly put an Insta360 Go on it. Uh, poopity 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 poop. Yapsy says, is it ready yet? Uh, is what ready yet? Um, Rob Axis says, any shark bite info to pass on? Nothing. I don't really get, um, I, I, I don't really get the scoop on, on much of anything, uh, quite yet. So, uh, I guess, I guess maybe every once in a while, if I'm talking to Joshua, he'll, he'll tell me something fun, but then I, I, I usually don't share it, um, just because if I expect to be told the, the juicy secrets, then I have to not spill the beans. Spill the beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Good looking, Ted. Um, Rob Axison, haven't touched uh, haven't touched BF four point question mark and the filters from what I've been seeing, uh, and is all uh, it is all that in a bag of chips. Yeah, be uh, Beta Flight four point one uh, now into four point two is pretty impressive. Uh, Daniel says landing on the dock is so sketchy. Indeed, all we all we had the whole upper uh, part of the dock that we could have landed on, which we did a couple times. But other than that, we're like, ah, we're fine. We're... <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, Copter six twelve says, wait, this is where they filmed the Ozark series. Goddamn right it is. That's Buddy's house, Copter. That is Buddy's house. That's the birdhouse, man. I showed up and I'm like, yo, we going to the birdhouse? And they're like, what fucking birdhouse? What, what are you guys talking, what are you talking about, dude? I'm like, the birdhouse, the bird's fucking house from Ozark. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> Mark Kunoff says, scraggly, 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 scraggly moon, no whoops, never surrender. Indeed. Uh, dies from fire, live. In <laughs> yeah. Oh, Aphix is calling me on it. All right. There you go, Athix. There's the goddamn lava lamp. I, I hope it doesn't heat up in time. I hope it doesn't. I hope it just sits there like a like a shit bird, uh, in in solid wax mode until the end of the stream. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that. I swear. Um, oh fuck me! I'm on top chat, not live chat. Son of a bitch. So I guess I missed some things. Well, it, when I switched it to live chat, it, it didn't show me more, so I guess now I'll, I'll see them all. So if, uh, if, if, if you tag me in a comment that's above Copter saying, wait, this is where they film the Ozark series, uh, drop the comment again, please. Uh, all right, we got the thing on. Uh, off Axis says, you should see my hair. Beard is out of control. Yeah, I'm trying to keep this. I'm trying to keep the beard situation somewhat under control, but the top of my head is just off the reserve. I mean, look at this. Look at this nonsense. It's, it's, it's absolutely, uh, we'll just let it go. Oh, God. Ugh. We'll just let it go for as long as, as long as possible. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, Mr. Stuck says, but do you really see that tiny orange thing on a large lake? Yeah, I mean, it's, th that's, that's why I was thinking it was like a balloon. I, I thought it, w it would be like an orange balloon or some shit like that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm weirdly worried about that myself. But, in theory, yeah, so like, if you're, if you're just running long range out over the lake, it might not be good, because it's, it's gonna be a needle in a haystack. Uh, if you're following people, though, so I would more want to use it yeah, so I guess that makes sense. So if, if you're doing, like, straight-up long-range stuff, I, I, I guess it makes sense to do, like, the pool noodle. Or the other thing, uh, the thing that Sanaka did was take a, uh, like, a one-liter uh, empty water bottle, and he put that on the bottom, uh, duct-taped that to the bottom. Uh, hey, duct-tape! Where's Weirdo? Uh, so, yeah, I guess if you were doing straight-up long-range, you would you'd want to have something big like that. Uh, but for what I was doing with the... Uh, with the What's it called? Wakeboarding? With the wakeboarder, I would actually rather have the, the little guy on there so that there's a little bit less of an impact to performance. Um, and because of the fact that if I went in, the boat that's dragging him, and he would probably really see it cool. himself, um, so the boat, in theory, could just turn around and have a rough location and find the little yellow thing and, and go grab it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's very true. I, I would love to... Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think there's going to be more lake shenanigans, so I'll, I'll continue to figure out the best uh, scenario. 
yes, but remember those carbon fiber waffles that one company put on their quad. Uh, people like that, so the pontoons should be fine. That's true. Um, although when I watched the uh, the flight footage with those waffles, um, I don't care that calling them carbon fiber waffles is the most asinine thing ever. I just like to say the word waffles, so I'm just going to say waffles as much as I can. Uh, so, yeah, Daniel Maurer says, remember those carbon fiber waffles that one company put on their quad? Um, uh, I just wanted to read it again so I could say waffles again if you guys didn't pick up on that. Uh, people like that, so the pontoon should be fine. So when I watched that footage with the waffles on the quad, I got to say it again, uh, I thought it looked horrible. <laughs> I just, I didn't like how it, like, it just stopped. Like, when you came off the throttle, it just, you could tell that it just stopped carrying momentum. Um, and that's kind of what I was feeling with this big bastard on the bottom is like there was just like a it, it just felt like I was towing like a streamer or a parachute. Um, it almost felt like there was a big ass pool noodle strapped to the bottom of my quad. Uh, Jack Jorgensen says, what factors bring the noise level down on a three inch 4S builds? Um, it looks like he's got an Armaton Gecko. Any recommendation on props and motors? Um, unfortunately, Jack, the biggest thing is just less power. Um, <laughs> I know that's like not at all what you want to hear, but uh, yeah, power makes noise. Uh, what I can say is that tri blades are typically less like buzzy and raspy uh, than than bi blades. Uh, so I would say get 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 into a tri blade, and yeah, just pick like. Like, so HQ props, I've noticed, are a little bit louder than gem fan props, uh, which makes sense. HQ props tend to be less efficient than gem fan props. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just buy, like, buy, like, a bag of a whole bunch of different sets of props and just try them and see which ones. It, it's, it's, it tends to be very, like, setup specific. Like, each one of my setups, I have noticed, like, there is a prop that'll typically be a little bit quieter than others. So you just kind of have to, um... Um, you just gotta sort of experiment, but yeah, find the setup with the least power you can possibly stomach, and then try a bunch of different props. That that's gonna be my uh, my recommendation to you. Uh, Marco Danilovic seems like the FPV community needs something like that recovery thing just for trees. Yeah, the tree recovery thing is rough. Um, would be interesting. It, w it would be interesting to pop a, a line down from a tree. Uh, if we could. Speaking of servos. Yeah, but see, then the servo breaks. Um, yeah, what could you do? What uh, What could you do to make that thing... So I guess your recovery device could be a fucking super soaker, right? And then you get it stuck with the getter back in the tree, and then you sit there and you super soak your... <laughs> or just wait for the rain! Oh, yeah, you get it... St if you have that getter back thing on there, um, it gets stuck in the tree, you just wait for it to rain. Although it did say depth. It did say depth, so you know what? It, it's, um... It's not water activated, it's pressure activated. Um, so yeah, I guess we would need to make one that's water activated. And then that would work in a tree. You just need a big super soaker that you can squirt it. And then it pops a little thing with the line down, and you yank on the line, and then you break the fishing line, now you're back to square one. Um, uh, Ishin LAL 3HD Ray Hova asks what my thoughts are on it. I am the worst when it comes to bind and flies, so I'm going to have to look it up and give you my opinions from the specs. Looks like I've looked it up before, though. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we talked about this uh, a few streams ago, maybe one or two streams ago. Um, I like it. It's got... I like the specs. I don't like the motors. 1408 motors are more a racing motor, in my opinion. Um, I think you're going to be best off bringing this down to, like, a 1407 or maybe even a 1306. Uh, other than that, yeah, I like this frame, uh, or I like this, uh, ready to fly. Ooh! I just woke up. <clears throat> the, the frame looks good, the, the components that are on it look good, and, uh, yeah, I'm into it. Uh, I don't like the Caddx Turtle, uh, as a, as a, as a camera. The FPV feed is, is pretty, uh, pretty abysmal, but if... The, I am a, a true believer and like in like sacrifice all for the HD. Uh, this tiny trainer is <laughs> is the example of that the FPV feed on this is brutal, but the HD is half decent. So I will continue to fly this Caddx baby turtle in tiny little rigs 
because I'm willing to sacrifice for the HD. Uh, okay. Sorry you guys had to witness that. That was horrifying to me as well. Uh, oh, Christ, YouTube. Come on, man. Uh, off Axis says, Dude, you can have a PC of crap Insta360 Go. Oh, <laughs> you can have my piece of crap Insta360 Go. Yeah, but see then, Off Axis, I would just break it in like two batteries because it's going to be sitting like... Yeah, it's... it's I, if I don't... Yeah. The Insta360 Go was not created to take crashes, um, and all I'm going to do is crash it because when I fly micros, I beat the hell out of them. So, yeah, I have to, um, I have, to have one with a Best Buy warranty or it's going to be... A, a hundred dollar exploded yeah <laughs> John Dyson I remember somebody mentioning ping pong balls um, John Dyson ping pong balls are super uh, for uh, for buoyancy and light and streamline and streamline right right uh, yeah you know um, uh, uh, Mythbusters used ping pong balls to float a fucking shipwreck they pumped in like 110 billion ping pong balls and floated a, uh, a big, you know, heavy ass metal shipwreck, like an actual shipwreck, uh, from the bottom of the uh, L.A. Bay Harbor. Uh, yeah, how could we put? I wonder how we could put enough ping pong balls on. I wonder if I could get like a big piece of shrink wrap. I have some pretty, I have some like inch diameter shrink wrap somewhere. Um, I wonder if I could, like, put that on the arms with, like, a line of ping pong balls under it. I wonder if that would be enough buoyancy. Um, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, TweetFPV has not had much luck with the Insta360 extended warranty. They say they can't take any service... Oh. They can't take in any service work, uh, because of COVID. Interesting. Huh. They're hardlining that. Uh, I mean, good for them. That means they care about their uh, their employees. Sucks for us. Uh, hey, I'm almost caught up with the chat. Ooh. Daniel says, congrats, you're caught up. Uh, Pesky FPV says, what's up? Uh, good to catch up. Good to catch up with you as well, Pesky. Thanks for the kind words the other day somewhere. Um, Facebook, maybe? I got you. Fam, as they say. Uh, off axis with a comment at the perfect time. I am caught up. Okay, I have a question that might. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I missed one. I missed one. I missed one. Mr. Shady asking, got any views on the GEP RC Mark IV HD or the iFlight? Man, you guys are going to make me learn fucking bind and flies. Sons of bitches. Thank you for forcing me to learn bind and flies. I need to learn about them. So, Gap RC Mark IV frame. So they called it the Mark IV and they put 5 inch props on it. Um, come on man, really? Uh, my first concern is that they Swiss cheese the shit out of this top plate. Good lord. Um, usually you don't want to take quite that much material out, but it does kind of look like it's a thicker top plate, so maybe it's okay. Uh, carbon fiber looks to be going the right direction on the arms. Uh, it's got vertical camera plates, which I don't love, but a lot of frames have it, so I'll shut my mouth. <laughs> uh, I want to see if I can get a look at the arm design. Whoa, what'd they do with the center section there? That's kind of cool. So they connected the front arms and the rear arms the way that I like it, but then they didn't use an X plate. Um, that is a... I'm going to use the word daring. <laughs> uh, that is a daring design, in my opinion. Uh, I have a feeling that there's going to be... That this is not going to hold up to really hard crashes. Um, they've also taken a lot, an awful lot of material out here. That might be okay, though. Uh, yeah, this top plate looks thick. So it looks like they, they did a thicker top plate, but they uh, 
they took a ton of material out of it. I would actually prefer that. I would prefer to have like a two or two and a half mil top plate uh, for more strength in the up and down direction, which is when the battery comes down, um, it puts a lot of stress on the top plate if you have a really, really hard hit. Um, my main concern with this frame though is in here. I, I think, and, and physics says that when this thing takes a crash, right? So when you, so think like uh, you flat bottom, you, you crash this thing completely flat, right? Here, let me come over here. Um, so you crash this, a, a lot of times you, you can, you kind of recover right before you hit the ground. So you get, you don't hit the ground like completely sideways or completely inverted. A lot of times you'll get it somewhat vertical, but it, one arm will typically hit first. And that puts on a, just a ton of energy in this direction, in the upward direction, right? Right, the arm's getting pushed upward. So this frame, I don't think, is going to deal with that all that well. Because look at the, look at the, what's going to happen, right? This arm is going to try to, is going to try to bend upwards, and it's just going to twist the shit out of that little piece of carbon. You, you the, the conventional frame design and durable frame design uh, design designates that you want to connect these. You want to have a piece of carbon connecting these on both the top and the bottom, not just on the bottom. This, this bottom plate is going to do very little to prevent from this arm just um, leveraging the shit out of this little piece of carbon and just annihilating it. Uh, so yeah, I would not fly this frame if you crash. Uh, I would only really fly this frame if you're looking for like a long range or if you fly over grass or something soft. I would not want to crash this, uh, this frame over, uh, uh, um, concrete or anything harder than grass to be really honest with you guys. Uh, other than that, it looks kind of fancy and it's, it's cool. I like what they did. They... Uh, they did this uh, where's that this one so they, they did this design so that they can drop the stack down lower which is um, I, I love that I, and, and the the prop line is gonna be nice and high um, thumbs up on that but they I just I think they did it in a way that is gonna really sacrifice durability um, I could totally be wrong but I've been flying and crashing and learning about frames for a long time um, the better part of like two years uh i've been really actively like paying attention to it every single piece of carbon that i break i save so that every once in a while i kind of take them all out and just compare where um where the failures occurred and yeah i don't know it's it's given me a pretty good idea and i mean when when you crash a lot uh you just kind of learn <laughs> okay there was another one though. iFlight DC5 Titan. Let's learn about that one. All right, let's go over to iFlight's website and take a look at the Titan DC5. All right, so it looks like they have a DJI version of it. Um, I didn't say I didn't see you put DJI in the title, but I'm gonna assume that the DJI version of it is fairly similar. Come on, man, load. Well, maybe the the non DJI version of it'll work on their website. Or not. Wow, their website is on Struggle Street. There it is. Okay, that's not what I was looking for. Uh, oh, geez. Okay, so that's uh, that's a pretty specific long range frame there. Uh, you guys can't see it. There you go. So that's a pretty specific long range frame with the front arms swung back like this. They do that to get the props out of view. Um, unfortunately, the, the front arms become a lot less strong when you do this to them. Um, so right off the bat, same kind of deal. This is not going to be a, a, a very, a, a super durable frame, in my opinion. But it is going to be a good cinematic kind of frame, uh, or maybe like a long range frame. Uh, okay, it looks like this one is set up for the DJI system. Um, yeah, I mean, just right off the bat, with, with those front arms swung back like that, you're, you're never going to get the, uh, the strength of a, of a, a regular, uh, you know, symmetrical true X or, or squished X frame. 
Um, other than that, I mean, it, it looks kind of interesting. I'm, I'm trying to get a... F oh, they did the same thing. See, they did the same thing. Yeah, the, 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 I have the exact same opinions on this frame um, as that previous one. I think they're both uh, kind of specifically designed for someone that's not going to crash a whole lot because I just do not think that this is going to hold up all that well. Um, so yeah, if that describes you, they look pretty good. I would go with the other one. That This looks awful chunky and awful heavy. Um, I'm willing to bet that the GEP RC frame is going to be lighter than this. And for a frame that you're not going to crash, it, it kind of might as well be light, right? <laughs> like, there's no point in carrying around any extra grams um, unless those grams are going to uh, be durable. Uh, this thing, this is a, uh, a, a balance lead protector that also has an LED built into it. Isn't that cool? You strap it down to your battery. Uh, there's two different, well, there's a bunch of different versions, 4S, 5S, 6S. Uh, but then there's a, there's like a lightweight, I think, uh, version. And there's a heavyweight version. Maybe not. Maybe I'm making that up. Uh, but yeah, perspective image. Here's a here's a link if uh, if you want to get yourself this thing. I just think it's a super cool little product. If you need to get an LED on your rig and you don't want to tear it apart, there you go. Strap it to the battery. Um, I don't think it's all that heavy, and you've got a nice LED sitting up on top of your battery. Or um, it's actually meant to be a skid plate for bottom mount. Um, so if you're running a bottom mount battery, there's an excellent little skid plate for you. Um, but I think it would also totally work on the top of a freestyle rig just to give you a free LED and something to protect your balance lead. So yeah, man. Support support small businesses, yo. Get you yourself a KBD LED battery sled complete unit. All right. Uh... This camera, this camera, and this camera. Tell the world what you got going on. Who knows what that's from? Uh, off axis FPV. Question might sound odd or dumb. What about putting tri blades on the front, four blades on the rear, uh, and then tuned? Would it turn better? Uh, that might be a bit much for the um, for the PID loop to be able to handle, because. Jack is on the scene. Good shit, Jack. Uh, yeah, that. So I say that because uh, when I had the uh, Stan FPV ducts on my uh, Acrobrat, and there were two occasions that I broke just one of the ducts, and the PID loop could not handle it. Like it, so the the duct on the right front, the the most obvious time that it happened. The right front duct broke. Not even the whole duct, just the top part of the duct above the prop line. Um, that broke, and then the PID loop could not keep the. It could not level the rig out. The the that from losing the duct, that side produced so much less thrust that the rig was constantly stuck in a in a right front down orientation. And even like in air mode and acro, I had to pull the fucking thing back to get that motor fired up enough for it to to hover uh so yeah i think that the difference so you can you can move kv you can run like a higher kv stator because the pid loop just sends less uh rc command to that motor but when it's a physical thing when like the physical propeller um is make or that corner in, in this case with the ducts is making that much less thrust I guess there's just a limit. There's just a limit to what the uh, the PID loop can handle. And yeah, so I don't know if that would work, but I would love to see somebody try it. Might be me. I might try that. Maybe. If I remember, I'll try it. Uh, Yapsy asks, can you fly a whoop? I can indeed. Yapsy, are you asking me to fly a whoop, like right now? Or are you asking me if I fly whoops? Um, uh, the answer to both of those is yes. If you'd like me to fly a Whoop battery right now, I will, because it's sitting right here, and there are some batteries charged. Uh, Mauer says a micro would need 10 ping pong balls. Okay, so that's not going to work. 5 inch at 600 grams would need 20 ping pong balls to reach neutral buoyancy. Yeah, that's a bit much. That's As Off Axis says, that's a lot of balls. Um, whew, yeah, that's a lot. That 20, 20 balls would be tough. But, may, I mean, shit, maybe you could just, like, 
I don't know. Maybe you could just put like a bag of fucking ping pong balls up on top of the battery and, and maybe that's far enough away. The, the name of the game is getting the buoyant things as far away from the... the so the props pull air in like this, if, if you're looking at it from the side. They pull air in like, like this and then they push air out in a cone. Um, so whatever we have to do to get the buoyant stuff away from the the moving air over the props um, and having the the thing in the middle on the bottom that disturbs the the inside part of the cone right there's there's two opposing cones of thrust coming off each side so having a big old uh, pool noodle here does disrupt that for sure so putting the in theory putting the pool noodle or the ping pong balls up here might be better I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll do some. I'll do some testing. But then having the the other thing is having the pool noodle up here. When you put your nose down, you're just <laughs> you're just pushing that pool noodle through the air, right? So it's like you're either forcing this pool noodle through the air um, first, or you're putting it into the wake of of the prop. So who the hell knows which is which is better? Um, uh, ooh, that's a good question, Tiago. Uh, let me do this in order, though. Mr. Tux, uh, I think, yes, Mr. Tux, I think this, I think the not connected arms isn't just a problem with this frame, but, for example, the iFlight Titan DC5 with dead cat arms has the same issue. Yeah, so the, the second frame that we looked at would be possibly even worse. Um, although maybe not, but... but because we're talking about the arms just torquing that piece of carbon, um, in theory it might be worse, but maybe not. Uh, because of the, there are just too many things that go into that. The weave of the carbon fiber, the directionality of the strength of the carbon fiber, that kind of stuff. So it's, um, I won't speculate because I'll just make an ass out of myself. Uh, Tiago Ramos asks, what's the height of the Emacs 1404s? Awesome, awesome, awesome question. Uh, I wanted to measure that myself. They are, we're going to do millimeters because the imperial system is stupid. Um, it is one, no, we'll do millimeters. It is 13 millimeters tall. Just double check that. Yep, 13 millimeters tall, maybe like 13 and a half. Um, but yeah, right around 13 to 14 millimeters tall, uh, which is kind of tall, I think, right? That's tall compared to the Beta FPV 1404s. Unfortunately, the Beta FPV 1404s uh, feel so much more notchy that I don't think they're really an option. No, it's not that much taller. It's, a, it's only one millimeter taller. Uh, these guys, even though they look a lot... Uh, you know, one of them looks a lot, well, you guys can't really tell, but, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, 13, four, uh, thir 12, 13. There you guys go. Uh, and the, the, the RCX motors are kind of tall, uh, because they have a weird bell design. RCX motors are 14 millimeters tall. So 12, 13, 14, look at us go. Changing the world. Um... Jack Jorgensen, is there a reason why the arms almost always are in line with the bottom plate and not the top plate? Um, so, Jack, it has to do with center of gravity. Uh, the, the, the main force, well, the only force that we're applying is from the props. So the prop line, it's, it, the, the prop line is very important, and that's the well, you're looking at it right now. So that's the that's the prop line. See how I got all four props lined up? So that's the line. That is where the force gets applied. So when you think about when you think about doing flips and rolls and, and yaw and stuff like that, um, what you want to try to do on a freestyle rig is get as much weight above 
the prop line as a as below the prop line so that way when you do a roll or when you do a flip um, the center of gravity is roughly in the middle lined up with the prop line so that the uh, so that the rig will basically spin uh, what's the word um, uh, you know what I'm saying I can't think of the word but uh, yeah so a rig like this is not like that at all this is very 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 bottom heavy um, so we've got a lot more weight below the prop line so when this goes to do a roll it's gonna well no it's actually gonna rotate around the mass so the the center of gravity is low so the quad is actually gonna rotate around the battery to some extent um, because the the center of gravity is, is really low down towards the battery if the center of gravity was high it would rotate like this whereas if the center of gravity is centered it's gonna rotate dead even um, and when it rotates dead even like that it's a lot less work when it when it swings up and around the motors actually have to do more work or when it when it swings around the battery the motors have to do more work because they're traveling a long right look at the distance they're having to travel right they're literally traveling a bigger distance than if it was centered and it just and it just um, spun around on the prop line so that's why uh, freestyle frames have the batteries up on top we're trying to even out the center of gravity so um, with the with the prop line uh, so this is the glide frame. So this has the um, this has the the arms down level with the base plate. Um, this setup pretty much puts the prop line almost perfectly even with the top plate. You can kind of see that, right? So the the level of the the top of the motor is pretty much dead even with the level of the top plate. So basically, we've got an 80 gram session 5 or 115 gram uh, hero and then we've got 160 to 180 gram battery and then you've got the rest of the quad below that so above the prop line you've got roughly uh, I don't know how to do the math but you know a number and then below <laughs> below the prop line you have roughly that same number so a freestyle rig is gonna for the most part rotate almost perfectly on the prop line um, so now you look at, um, so the, it's, it's interesting, the way that you worded the question, you specifically called out Tommy's frame. Tommy's frame is the Umagod Remix, uh, Tommy's 5-inch frame, I should say. Um, and the Umagod Remix has the arms up on the top plate, um, and one of the things that happens is the, the center of gravity on Tommy's frame is a little bit lower, is a little bit below the prop line because of that. It's not quite as low as something like this, because his frame is still a top mount battery, but it's got the prop line raised up. So every single review uh, of somebody flying his frame and reviewing his frame, they'll all say, Drew's, uh, Drew's got a video where he compares top mount, mid mount, which is what we, he calls Tommy's frame, and bottom mount. Um, and he basically says that Tommy's frame feels like a mix, and go figure, right? Um, but yeah, it feels like a mix of top mount to bottom mount, um, and it's it's just a feel thing. Everybody that I've talked to that's flown the Remix frame says the same thing. It feels different. They don't say that it feels better. They also don't say that it feels worse, but they all say that it just feels a little bit different. Um, so yeah, that's if you want some, if you build a top mount freestyle frame and you don't quite like the way that it feels and maybe you're used to bottom mount batteries, get a Remix, get a Remix V2, and you'll have uh, you'll have something that feels really good to you. Okay. Great question, Jack. Thank you for that. Uh, Proton to go just bought a Glide with dead cat arms. Are they weak in crashes as well? Uh, weaker than the regular arms? Yes. Uh, but the, I mean, the dead cat arms are there for cinematic stuff. Like, there's you, you probably shouldn't be flying freestyle with those dead cat arms. Um, the regular arms will, you will not get any props in view uh, if you run 30 degree up tilt. So there's, yeah, the only reason to run those dead cat arms is if you want 
20 or 10 or zero degree up tilt, which you're probably not going to want for freestyle flying. Um, so yeah, but I, in fairness, maybe they're strong. I don't know. They're shorter, uh, but I, I my assumption is that they're not going to be as strong. Um, but I've never crashed them, so I I, I don't technically know that. Uh, Mr. Tux, I would get the Gep RC Mark IV over the DC-5 because DC-5 one broken arm costs you $20. Jesus. Mark IV arm is like $7. Um, I, the, the flip side of that, though, Tux, is those are rigs that you shouldn't be crashing. So you shouldn't be replacing arms on them anyway. Um, so unless you're, you're locked into that frame for freestyle where you're going to be crashing, um, yeah. Uh, Eric Farmer, oh yeah, definitely rip a whoop pack on stream. Okay, we'll do it. Mr. Tux, disclaimer, I actually have a Mark IV in the mail. Well, that sucks for you. Wait, no, is that the, the one that I liked? I think that's the one that I liked. <laughs> um, Brandon Metley, have any tips on tuning power whoops for wind? What the hell's a power whoop? Uh, I get I-term wind up, slow overshoot on 180 degree turns, into and out of headwind, beta flight 4.2 helps following the tuning guide for wind up. Uh, Brandon, how do you know that it's I term wind up? Or do you have, um, uh, are you looking at logs to figure out that's what it is? Uh, explain, do me a favor, explain to me uh, the, the, the bad behavior that it's doing. Uh, tell me that um, when you're coming down from the bottom of a power loop, for example, and you hammer the throttle, it wobbles maybe is is that maybe what you're dealing with um yeah just i get i see it's i, I your your definition of i term wind up might not be what mine is um and i and i want to eliminate that from the troubleshoot all right yeah yeah keep telling me that brandon keep telling me like okay so on turns around trees while racing okay so that is typically typically you need more degain to 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 get that out of there, um, or a higher cutoff on the I term. Single overshoot in turn. So nose is down, turning around this tree, coming around here. I'm. A, it sounds like when you start to come around the tree, it starts to wobble. But then, but then you're saying there's a single overshoot. Typically, overshoot is associated with like a snap. And when you're going around a tree, I don't think you're sna unless you're snapping the motion on the tree. Usually, you go in relatively. Um, it's just one oscillation, not multiple shakes, and it's slower than p-term shakes. Um, does the rig have black? Uh, black box only in a headwind so nose is down headwind at what point does it um at what point does it give you the uh the the bobble let's start calling it a bobble because that's that's what it sounds like what it is um when does it give you the bobble uh let's say so uh, i'll go back to autocross mode um corner entry mid corner or corner exit all right let's assume it's a it's a 180 that you're doing right is this are you getting this on corner entry where you start to lean it in are you getting it on the steady state uh mid corner area or are you getting it when you pick the throttle back up and exit the corner uh one bobble at the end of the turn when closing the turn does it happen when you it practically flips you over holy shit um does it happen when you stab the throttle like when when does it when does it happen um so nose down into the headwind corner entry is fine mid corner is fine um this is a blip shift shirt take a flight uh bli here they don't sell it all the time blip shift uh puts throttle constant what so you're on a constant throttle around this tree but then at some point on corner exit it's just it, it's just throwing you. Um, blip shift is user submitted designs, and then you have 24 hours to order it. And then uh, they get them all printed, and then you receive your shirt in like two weeks. 
um, but it goes away. Uh, Brandon, that is really weird. Um, that is really, really weird. Uh, only in a headwind. I mean, here's here's the main problem. That's a racing tuning issue, and I don't I don't ever do any of that. So I mean, even having your your I term uh, 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 relax cut off up at a twenty rather than a ten that I'm used to is going to drastically change the 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 tuning advice needed. So um, I would hit some of the tu some of the racers up. Um, that have really clean tunes and explain that to them. Maybe they've got uh, some some suggestions for you because I just don't I don't do corners like that much. I don't do like a regular old corner all that much. When I do it, um, typically I go full throttle about halfway through, like mid corner. I go full throttle and try to like really exaggerate the exit of the corner, um, just because I think that's more interesting visually. Um, I'm not doing it for to get out of the corner fast. I'm just doing it to look cool. Um, so yeah, and, and conversely, I'm entering the corner very slow. Um, so yeah, um, damn, that's a uh, do me a favor if if you remember, let me know because um, I'm I'm super interested in what the hell's causing that. That's a crazy problem. Um, scroll up a little bit here. Mr. Tux, I wonder if you could do some floating by making the frame out of hollow tube carbon fiber. Um, it would have to be pretty thick. You, the 600 grams is a lot to make float. Um, the um, Yeah, they would have to be big. I think they'd have to be big, thick uh, carbon fiber tubes to have enough air in them. And then how the hell would you seal them? I guess you could just seal them with whatever. Seal them with cock. Sorry, cock. Uh, John Dyson thought there was a frame with staggered arms from front to rear. St what do you mean by staggered, John? Staggered arms from front to rear. You mean dead cat? Front arms swung back and then the rear, rear arms swung back a little bit? Uh, do, 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 do. Rob Axon says, I read that. I read that had to do with prop wash and dirty air. Um... Interesting. Yeah, I don't. I, uh, Ted Blake asking if Crickard's frame is going to be a remix spinoff. I don't know. The the uh, uh, FPV. Hey, the FPV geek has two images on his Instagram of the Cricket frame though. Uh, that you'll be able to see it. So there you go. Look up the FPV geek on Instagram and uh, you can find some pictures. All right. Fuck you. I'll do it for you. Uh, the FPV Geek. Let's see if this is his, uh, I think it is. Hey, there we go. Nope, not a remix spinoff. They are on the bottom plate. There it is. So there you go. They're on the bottom plate, but, um, he went ham with the top plate. I've been talking to Tommy about this, fr about this, uh, frame design for, like, the last six months. He's been working hard on it. Um, so there's a lot of thought and, uh, and work that Tommy has put into this. Uh... Looks to be pretty good. I am shocked that it's only 101 grams. I cannot believe how light this frame is. Uh, so I am somewhat interested. We'll see. We'll see how it is. I'm not going to jump on the, uh, the the bandwagon really early. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think there's another picture of it here somewhere. No, that's not it. Well, there were two images up here. Now there's just the one. So, well, here's another one. All right. Uh, I'm going to fly a whoop battery in a second here. Um, Protonigo says, I run 25 degree cam angle. Will there be props in view on the glide with normal arms and 23 millimeter standoffs? Uh, at 25 degrees, yes, you'll have a tiny little bit of prop in the bottom corners. Uh, you might not notice it, but uh, yes, at 25 degrees, there will be a little bit. Uh, hey, I'm caught up on the chat. No, I'm not. Do you use DJI goggles now? Avinas asks. I do not. Um, I do not have the budget to upgrade to, the, to get the DJI system for my 5-inch rigs, um, and a lot of my micros are far too small 
to be carrying around uh, even the Cadex Vista. Uh, so until there is like, basically until I can sell all of my analog stuff to be able to pay for the DJI setup, uh, unfortunately it's, it's just not gonna happen for me. Um, but that's okay, the, the analog system still works really good and um, I don't know, I'm here for all the broke FPVers that can't afford the DJI system. We can struggle in, in uh, blurry FPV feed goodness together. Uh, Tuck says, staggered arms equals back arms higher than the front arms. Right, of course. Right, 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 right. So, staggered arms, and I think the question was about CG, right? Um, John Dyson thought there were there was a frame with staggered arms front to rear. Uh, there are. There are a couple frames uh, that run the rear arms up higher, and that's cool because it raises the rear prop line. Uh, when your nose down, the rear props get a little bit of dirty air from the cone of thrust coming off the fronts. So raising the rear motors up helps that. It puts the rear motors into cleaner air. Um, the the issue with it seems to be durability. It doesn't seem like anybody's really been able to make a super durable frame like that because there are just engineering challenges inherent to not having all four arms on the same you know, line or the same base plate. Um, it's a really good idea in theory. I guess it also can create some havoc with the center of gravity, right? Because you're raising the prop line. So that's gonna raise the center of gravity as well. Um, so God only knows what happens there. Um, but yeah, it's a really good idea in theory. For like a long range rig, it makes a lot of sense to, to raise the rear motors up. Uh, but I don't know, man, when, when, when something is rare that people know about, it's kind of like, well, did nobody just make a good frame? Did, like, did nobody implement that, right, properly? To use kind of douchey corporate jargon. Uh, right, so did, did, did nobody properly build a frame with that design, or is there another problem with it? Is, is it just a design that doesn't work in practice? Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But uh, if you find out, let me know. Because I love when, when there's actual innovation. Like, like th this tiny trainer frame. That, like, it, there's a bunch of cool stuff about this frame that's very different. Like, who the hell thought that we could have a, a TPU little battery pocket on the bottom that works amazing. Like, switching batteries on this thing is a joke. <laughs> you just rip the battery out, slam the new one in there, and everything is just right here, and, like, you're good to go. And, like, you know, I mean, that's awesome. Like, that's such a cool little real actual innovation that really does work well. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I love innovation, but also the flip side of that is innovation for the sake of innovation I don't love just doing it different for the sake of doing it different um, that I really don't like and unfortunately in the micro world that kind of runs rampant um, there are a lot of micro frames that are designed weird just to try to get you to buy them um, and me uh, and that I don't like um, I prefer it to be like hey, we had this problem, we were trying to solve this problem by doing this differently, um, and this is the approach that we took, rather than, hey, I need to sell more frames over the next, you know, in the next three months, uh, what can I do that looks neat or shiny or cool to, to for clickbait, basically, right? Um, Avina says, so do you use rapid fire and what antennas do you use on your goggles? You'll see in a minute, Avina's, I do, uh, and I use a menace patch and a... Um, a, uh, I am 100% true RC uh, singularity antenna now on my goggles, on my all my rigs, everything. Um, I see you, Yapsy. We're getting there. We're getting there. I gotta get the chat caught up before I do that though, because then the chat's gonna get behind again. Um, uh, John Dyson says front arms, lower plate, rear arms, upper plate, GEP RC, RX5 Hawk. So there we go. It looks like there's already a, a GEP RC frame that does that. Somebody buy it and tell me how it is. Um, 
I think I am actually caught up. Tiago, no, I'm not. Tiago says the rear end motor in an upper position should decrease prop wash. The rear end motor in upper position should decrease prop wash. Yeah, that's well in theory. Um, the what about the fact that when you raise the rear prop line, that cone of thrust from the rear motors is now going to interact more with the cone, of, and it could even interact with the the um, the prop line pulling air in, right on the front props. Maybe that's a reason why the the the, the rear motors raised thing never caught on i don't know uh just spitballing and all right so we're there cool now you're good yapsy i i i like that you're uh that you're excited and you're not spamming the chat that's the thing you you're you're waiting an appropriate amount of time everybody take take yapsy's what is it what is it over here take yapsy's uh his uh his his uh what's the word that was probably really loud. His, uh, what? What lights do you want to, like, your whooping? Oh. What's your course of action? Yeah, you pick. Kristen's going to pick the lighting scheme for the whooping. Um, uh, his, uh, Yapsy's, um... What's the word? Frequency. 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 That's the word. His frequency of, um of posting that question was good basically as long as you wait until your question has been like pushed off the top and like wait a little bit longer then it's cool you're not spamming <laughs> fuck as i get older um as i get older i'm 39 now uh that happens a lot more uh just not being able to think of a word and uh i don't love that that <laughs> that that is one of the, one of the things that like legit makes me feel old and yeah that sucks man doesn't feel great Where's my stuff? What if, like, for the entire rest of the stream, I just... Right. Oh, that was a bad idea to start spinning around. I have to, uh, I have to fly. Yeah, Rob, my, my eyesight is not what it once was either. I, I used to have better than 2020 eyesight. Um, I gotta, um, yeah, I gotta wait a second here so I don't throw up. Uh, oh, a fire extinguisher. That would be so good. Uh, yeah, I used to be able to read, not the very bottom line of the chart, but, but one up from that. And I could read a bunch of the letters in the bottom line, just not all of them. Uh, and yeah, my, my vision is not, is not there. Yeah, 2010, that's it. Uh, my vision is not there anymore. Uh, still really good, admittedly, but... All right, I'm not gonna throw up anymore. Let me see if I can find my stuff. Should I show the stream I'm ready? Kristen's gonna show the stream something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, she's gotta get closer. Show them. This is required. Required headwear for for wives when tiny whooping when reckless tiny whooping begins. Rob Axelson says Lego. He wants to see Lego. Show him something. Uh, everybody go and like Kristen Loves Lego on Instagram. Somebody type it into the chat for me, somebody that, that has already liked her. Uh, if you don't go like her right now, I'm going to stab you all in your eyeballs with, uh, uh, I don't know, something. K-R-I-S-T-I-N. K-R-I-S-T-I-N loves Lego. L-E-G-O. You never pluralize Legos. It's not Legos. It's Lego. That's important to some, some Lego people. Not Kristen, though. She's not, she's not that uh, vain. Hey, thank you for that, Tux. <laughs> she goes in the bedroom and closes the door so that she doesn't have to wear the... Uh... Oh, perfect. 
Look at her go. I'm working on my, I'm finishing up my juice shop. It's still really cool. Tell them about your juice shop, Kristen. It's a smoothie thing. You Speak, can, woman. <laughs> you can get different flavors, and it's getting kind of blurry. And yeah, salad. It's, it's uh, manual focus. Yeah, I'm walking away. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. All right. Let's, let's, let's whoop. Let's whoop! Enough of this serious shit. Let's just fly around the house and be generally insane. Yeah, she's good, guys. She's, she's new to Lego, but she's, uh, shockingly good already. I can't wait to see what she, uh, continues to do. Alright, this is a beta... No. Jesus. This is a newbie drone Tiny Whoop with Happy Model 25 million KV motors on it. And uh, the performance is ridiculous. And this is also on uh, Nitro Nectar uh, 300mAh batteries. Which are crazy. They are a crazy, crazy battery. Alright, that flickering is this stupid ass cable that I got from uh, Amazon. Just generally being a piece of trash. Come on, man. Don't, like, not work at all. Come on! Well, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm just gonna have to get another cable. Sorry, guys. It's, uh,. I don't know. I don't know what to say. All right, here we go. Wait, can you guys see? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's see how much hair we can yank out. Okay. Helps if you put it on the right model. 100% of the time. Hey, there we go. All right. Oh boy, oh god, oh god, it's my own hair. Wow, okay. Whoop flies way different than the five inch. Okay, 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 everything's fine. Oh boy, that was, uh, alright, hold on. Let me just, uh, let me just get sighted in here. Woo, boy. That was, uh, alright. Alright, man. The, uh, the throttle is really tough. My god, I forgot how touchy the throttle is on this. Let me, uh, alright, hold on. Let me take a little bit of the touchiness out of the throttle here. Uh, this is a good uh, thing for you guys to see. Uh, where the hell do they put it? They put it in... Uh, maybe it is in features. Where is the... Um, is it in power? No. Oh, no, no, it's in rates. It's in rates. Uh, these 25 million kV motors uh, full-blown require a throttle curve. And... Um, I don't usually use throttle curves, throttle expo, I should say. All right, let me add a little bit. I already have it up at 60. It's already like real. There's already a lot of throttle expo going on. Uh, Jesus. Okay, throttle midpoint is at 48. Let me move the midpoint down a little bit. So that's adding a little bit of throttle expo, and that just softens up the hover point. Let's see if that's a little bit better. Yeah, that feels better. Bedroom door is closed. Oh no. Yeah, go. Go otherwise. Let's go this way. Oh no. Oh, the other door is closed. I can get in there. Hold on. Alright, the cat's sleeping. We'll leave him alone. Nah, he's kind of away when I open. Nah, nah, fuck that. I'm coming down the hallway. I don't want to hit you in the face. I got the net. Nah, screw the bedroom. We're good. I'll just run you. Oh, wait, here. Ready, 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 ready? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love ramming her with the whoop. I love it. I love it. Oh, that's one of my favorite things to do. Oh, fuck. The goggles are getting all foggy now. Oh, shit. Oh, there's nothing better than ramming your wife with a tiny whoop. 
Oh man. <laughs> okay. I could crush you. <laughs> she said she could crush me. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Let's get in let's get into it. Enough screwing around. Oh god! Don't go in the sink! Ooh, ooh, shit. Alright, let's try to sneak out. Nope. When the corner of a whoop gets stuck under something, it uh, it becomes very hard to get out. Somewhat, sometimes impossible to get out. Yeah, because the pid loop just starts to wind up as soon as you uh, try to move out. <clears throat> Thank you! Where's that cat? There he is. Oh, Kitten hates the tiny whoops. He hates them. Play, play peekaboo with him? Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, no. I'm going to leave him alone. Oh, no! What was that? What, what happened to my rates? <laughs> what the fuck? Why was that, why was that so slow? What? Hold on. Uh, what, what was the deal with that? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. My rates are fine. What the hell? Alright, hold on. Let's try that again. Well, that's fine. What was it? That was weird. Oh, God. Very strange. Yeah, everything's fine. What the hell? I was stick all the way over. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Man. It's a real comedy of errors here today. Maybe I'll fly two batteries. Alright, now let me get my flow on. Oh, God, no flow. And now I'm stuck under the fucking tunnel again. Can you reach the tunnel from where you're sitting? God damn it. Thank you. Same spot. I know, I know. That, that tunnel has that angle. It always gets me. Are you guys ready? You guys ready? Oh boy! Cat cannot be happy with that one. Oh yeah, look, I put a, uh, I put a... Ikea lack shelf up here. Oh fuck. Oh god. Don't break my Legos. I'm trying to land on it when I'm having trouble. There we go. <laughs> Slam! Oh god. Yeah, put a little Ikea lack shelf up for Kristen's Lego. Look at that. And get down the hallway. Woo! Alright! Hey! Who else do you know that can fly acro inside like this? Alright, well, SR-13, yeah, but... Oh, no! It, it did the thing again! It didn't give me any rate! What the fuck? Wow! What is it? What? What's happening? Why is that happening? Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm behind a bag. Oh, God! Battery's dead. <laughs> Let me know all at once. Uh, wow, that's weird. What the... What... What's the deal with the uh, with that full stick rate? You guys saw that, right? All right. Let's uh, let's do one more. Put that battery away. One more. One more, real quick. Cause I, I didn't give you guys any actual flow on that. Ooh ooh ooh! Music. That's what's missing. Music. Okay. Okay. Here we go. There we go. We'll replay the music from the beginning. That was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, now I can feel it. Now I'm feeling it. <laughs> Fuck you, Rob. <laughs> oh, MC Hammer, you jerk. <laughs> Alright. Alright, I'm gonna try to fly for real this time. No more fucking around. Alright. Live edit. We're doing a live edit. Ah, oh, the cat ran away. Sorry, buddy. Oh, fuck. Ah, these motors on a fresh nitro nectar battery. So close, fuck you. 
I can squeeze it. good time flying this whoop around and I am in it now. It was the music! God. If you're a YouTuber, you're probably using this. Ah! This tunnel is so hard. Alright. Wow. Alright, now I gotta fly the rest of it. Tell me that this fucking. Oh, wait, no, I'm upside down. Oh! Shut up, YouTube! Oh, God! Whoa! Look at the throw on this thing, ready? No channel view counting, no limitations. <laughs> Use our list and start creating oh God. without limits. Sorry, you guys had to listen to a YouTube ad? Oh, this battery's dead. Woo! Well, shit. Thanks for telling me to fly a whoop, man. Damn, that was fun. Okay, I get it. I get it. Lots of ads. Okay, yeah. It's now, it's now like TV. I get it, YouTube. Oh, my God. Um... Oh, I keep forgetting I gotta lock that tune the rest of the way, and that that tune is not uh, is not finished. Woo! God damn, bro. Hold on. Oh shit! I left it plugged in, and now it's ah. Oh, sorry, buddy. Sorry, battery. Sorry, battery. Sorry, 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 sorry. Whoo, man. We had a couple. We had a couple moments in there. That shit got real. If I'm sweating. That means I'm working. Whew, god damn. Whew, 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 whew. <laughs> Rob, no, we're, <laughs> Rob says fast way for you to get to sleep on the couch. Uh, she's got the net on. Oh, you can take your net off now. She's got the uh, the net on. I, I was more worried about getting it stuck in my, I bet you my hair is long enough to, to actually get it hung up in my hair. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Uh, dead battery, okay. Damn. Yeah, whoop more, man. I gotta whoop more. I forget about how much fun it is. It is whooping. Um, it's you know what it is. The, my my problem with it though is that, and I guess I'm getting there a little bit with the um, with the uh, with that throttle expo, is that uh, the whoop doesn't feel like anything else. Like it it is. Flying the whoop actually makes me worse, unfortunately, at, at flying some of the other stuff because it's such a big... The, the it, It's fine when I fly the whoop, but then when I go to fly other non-whoop stuff, the adjustment is, is tough. Uh, but it's fun, so fuck it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and th this, my God, these, these mo... Th this whoop, though, I mean, come on. See those big throws and those big momentum moves and shit like that? Like, I I can't wait to build this uh, Beta Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop, which I am going to do this week, I promise. I promise I'll get to that this week, guys. Um, right here. 
this will pro- I think this is going to be like two full grams lighter uh, and have almost as much power. So I'm excited about that. Uh, batteries are done. Give me one more second, ladies and germs. Let me give you a, a, a uh, here's a, a tiny trainer, one more tiny trainer thing. Thing, there we go, thing. Here comes a thing, guys. Here's a thing for you. I'll leave the audio on as well. I'm going to go switch some batteries. And here you go. That beer can landing. Come on now. Let you guys know about that beer can. Um, all right, so got three tiny trainer batteries on the charger. What's going on in the chat? Uh, Avina is asking, do I fly bandos when I can? Uh, the Atlanta is a pretty... Um, Atlanta is a pretty... I don't want to say wealthy, but... Well off, well off is not right either. It's Atlanta is not an area that has a lot of bandos, uh, but if I can ever find one, hell yeah. Uh, okay, scrolling up in the chat, Rob Oxison says badass KV motors indeed, twenty five million, and hey, look at that, I'm somewhat caught up on the chat. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike Bergman says my wife's shaking her head. <laughs> Mine too, Mike. <laughs> uh, power, a power loop inside. Yeah, Rob, I'm, I'm working on the, the inside full-blown power loop. Um, I just, I don't have a good, I want to try to, I, I would love to do it in that tunnel, but that tunnel is like a little too tight. Um, and then it's like, like, do I pull a chair out? I don't know. I gotta find the the right spot. But yeah, those motors will do a full blown, like, legit, no, no, like, bullshit whoop, um, power loops. Like, it'll do a legit power power loop. No, none of like the, the you throw it backwards and it fucking wobbles and then you slowly go back through it. No, no, no. no. Th this will do like a legit hammer back through like five inch style uh, power whoop, power loop. Power whoop loop. Loopity poopity poopity loop loop whoop whoop. 
I got lots of batteries here. Some of them are discharged, some of them aren't. Um, so we talked about tiny trainer motors. We talked about, what else did I have in the description? Anything? Make sure I covered all our bases here. Because I, I would like to go fly. 3.8, this battery's dead. Uh, this one is not dead. What did I say? Editing Lake Lanier footage. Man, we didn't even touch that. I'm just going to straight up take that out of the uh, description. And I guess I need, I will also change the thumbnail. Kristen made a new thumbnail for me. Check this out. I asked Kristen to make me a Sunday fun day thumbnail and she banged it out in like 13 seconds. And I was blown away. Oh, she used that image. Cool. I don't know. Double -click Oops. What did I double click it for? That was a stupid thing to do. Oh, well, here. I can show it to you guys. Hey! There we go. Get out of here, preview. We don't like you, preview. All right. Pulling this to the desktop. Ciotti Thumbs Sunday, it's called. All right. Changing the thumbnail. Yeah, I don't love it. Well, I, I love editing when I have good... Like, last night when I did that quick little uh, for funsies edit, uh, I, that was really fun. Uh, but other than that, I'm with you guys. I don't love it. Let me pull that... Uh, I'll give you guys that quick edit real fast here. Hold on. Let me just copy it. To the hard drive. Oh, i got to unlock my phone. All right, phone is unlocked. Oh my God, iTunes, leave me alone. Stop asking me to sign in 7,000 times. You... All right, hold on. Let me change this thumbnail real quick before I forget. Hey, there it is. All right, thumbnail's changed. That's good to go. And... Nap time. Uh, okay, I think I did all the things that uh, that that I wanted to do. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Leave me alone. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna call it. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow night at ten o'clock. Wait, no, hold on. I gotta do this thing first. U.S. Utility 2. Why are you being a jerk? Oh, come on, iTunes. Don't, 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 don't. Wait, no. I need an image. Uh, what charger do I use? I have an ISDT Q6, and I hate it. Uh, for, 1S, <laughs> for 1S batteries, I have this little beta FPV thing, and I love it. Uh, Emacs. Emacs has this little guy. Which is totally fine, and it's USB and it's super handy, but I really like this thing by Beta FPV. Uh, it takes uh, 3S or 4S, so I use this to discharge uh, my 4S batteries. And then it'll do high volt or regular, and then it's got the small plug or the big plug. And they even have a new... Uh, <laughs> perfect, Tiago. Um, oh my god, there's a fat tube cat. Look at him. <gasps> he touched me. He touched the butt. Oh, my body. My body. He's a good boy. Get him, get him closer. Get him. That's farther. <laughs> oh, look at this tube. Kitten, look at the stream, people. Look there. Kitten, okay, he's look not, he's there. Me. Is he going to go crazy? Yep. Okay, bye -bye. That's the amount of time okay, that we bye -bye. get to uh, hold him. We, we get that exact amount of time, and then he's out. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. This this beta FPV thing is awesome. Uh, oh, here's that little uh, quick little for funsies edit. And then I'm going to... Oh, I'm going to leave you guys with this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys with this little edit. Uh, if you want to see it again, you got to go over to my Instagram and become my friend. Forced friendship, yes. Where is the program that I'm looking for? Uh, image capture, yeah. And phone. And 
MP4. What's that? Oh, 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 that's the full file there. Okay, yeah, yeah, I want the full file. Okay, importing. Import faster, please. Uh, any last second questions? Uh, well wishes? Um, racial slurs? <laughs> no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, Frank Nichols says, I refuse to use Facebook platforms, so it's over on Patreon. It's not on, I'm sorry, it's, it's over on Instagram, rather, not on Facebook. Um, I try to put as much stuff on Instagram because I know a lot of folks don't use Facebook. Um, unfortunately, I do use Facebook quite a lot. Um, and I, I can't change everything. Um, but I'm, I, I try, Frank, I really do. I, I try to, uh, to, to make stuff available in a bunch of different platforms. Uh, Marco asked about the T-Motor FT5 frame. I did see that. I'm skeptical of that center section that comes out. Uh, but that's yeah, true, Daniel. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It uh, farts on a Tuesday. I don't have any opinions on that frame yet. Free Lojo's cat looks exactly the same, but when he was younger. And all right, cool. It looks like I'm caught up on the chat. Uh, I didn't piss too many people off, hopefully. Uh. <laughs> Be good, be nice to people, wear your masks, and fight racial injustice, please. Um, it's not okay to just not be racist anymore. Uh, if you're not racist, you have to lay the smack down on the racists. Sorry, you just have to. Uh, I'm going to leave this with you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow night at 10 o'clock Eastern, where we'll do giveaways! Woo! All right. Be good, guys. Thanks for hanging. I'm going to play this. I'm going to play you guys out, and then I'm going to go fly. Later. Maybe. Is it nice out? Yeah, it's nice out. Later. Oh, I'm not ready at all. Awkward. <laughs> Awkward. Awkward silence. Cause he's not ready. Oh god, I played it on the desktop. Awkward. Oh no. I don't know how to computer. Awkward. Oh my god, it's all gone. It's all gone wrong. <laughs> Goodbye.